This past weekend, Southern California had its first tropical storm in over 80 years. And thankfully, it wasn't too bad for me in Los Angeles, but many other areas did experience heavy rains and moderate flooding. So hopefully everyone else out there is doing okay and able to recover from this event quickly. The possibility of a power outage was definitely a concern throughout the weekend. And coincidentally, I was preparing to make this video. So having a ton of power stations topped up and ready to go, keep essential electronic devices running, definitely helped give me and my family some peace of mind. The portable power station market has become Become completely saturated over the past few years and there's hundreds if not thousands of different models to choose from so over the past few months I've had the chance to perform some testing on a handful of different power stations and I created a database with my testing data which will helpfully serve as a guide for those of you looking to purchase something for yourself and as I continue to review more power stations in the future all of the data from these tests will be included as well so be sure to bookmark this page and check back in from time to time for new additions to the database I also created a similar database with data from all the solar panels that I've been testing, ranging from the smallest 5 watt panels all the way up to some 200 watt panels. So if you're looking to pair your power station with some solar, there's some great options there. And there's a link to that down in the description below as well. In order to test the capacity of each power station, I purchased this handy little watt meter, which gives a reading of the total watt hours. So I ran about a 50% load on each of these power stations with a full battery to see how close their actual watt hour capacity stacked up against the claimed watt hour capacity on the packaging. Out of all the power stations I tested, the Fox Theon iGo 600 actually did the best, delivering 94% of the capacity it claimed. I also calculated which of these power stations was the cheapest from a cost per watt hour perspective, and this 600 watt model from Oops did the best in this category by a long shot, with a cost per watt hour of 63 cents. To test their continuous AC outputs, I plugged in a bunch of different devices simultaneously to see how well they handled the watt outputs claimed, and whether or not they could continuously operate beyond that range. It's no surprise that the two Two largest power stations I tested, the BioLite 1500 and the Geniverse Home Power One Pro, both did the best and were each able to produce a continuous output of around 1240 watt, which was slightly better than the 1200 that they claimed. And again, Fox Theon's iGo 600 performed really well here, delivering 123% of what it claimed. Another important thing I wanted to test out was the charging time, which is how long it would take to go from a fully depleted battery to 100% by plugging them in with their included wall outlet power supplies. The All Powers R600 was was the quickest charging in the lineup at about 1.6 hours, which was incredibly fast. And even though it was one of the largest power stations in the lineup, the Geniverse Home Power One Pro was able to charge incredibly quickly in just 1.9 hours. Now we're gonna take a few minutes to discuss some of the unique features and the pros and cons to each of these power stations to help you decide which one might be the best fit for you. All right, so let's start off with the Geniverse Home Power One Pro, which is a lithium phosphate battery system. Geniverse makes a relatively small lineup of power stations and solar panels, and this is their mid-size 12 110 watt hour model and my capacity testing resulted in 1011 watts which was 84 percent of the capacity stated which does make it one of the best from all the power stations that i tested and i was able to run my refrigerator for over eight hours of normal use throughout the day it has a relatively simple array of ac and usb outputs and the display is definitely one of the nicest and most informative of any of the power stations here it was able to supply over 1200 watts continuously so this is going to be a good option for those of you looking to run some more power hungry devices the most comparable power station I tested would be BioLite's 1500 watt power station and the Geniverse power station was slightly more affordable from a cost per watt hour perspective and significantly faster at charging. One thing I did find a bit odd about this power station is that it is quite larger and heavier which is a bit surprising because it does have a lower watt hour capacity compared to BioLite's power station which is a lithium iron based system but lithium iron phosphate are heavier and bulkier compared to lithium ion so there is a bit of a trade off to this battery tech. On the positive side lithium Lithium phosphate batteries typically have substantially better performance and Geniverse claims that you should be able to get about 3000 charge cycles from this battery. Geniverse also sent me over their 200 watt solar panel and in another video I'm going to go more in depth into the panel and power station so be sure to stay tuned to the channel for more info on that in a few weeks. Runhood sent me over their brand new 1200 watt power station and this is their larger of two models and a few months back I tested out their smaller 600 watt system as well. Runhood has a very unique modular battery system which allows you to swap batteries in and out of their main housing. The Runhood 1200 can accept two batteries simultaneously or run on one at a time and these batteries can be charged in the power station with a wall outlet or even directly via solar panel so you could be running the power station during the day while charging the battery simultaneously to help you get through the evening. Runhood did exceptionally well in the continuous AC output category and it was able to deliver over 1200 watts continuously and it is a far more compact model compared to the BioLite 1500 and the Geniverse power station which had 
roughly the same continuous outputs. So if you want something compact that can handle a lot of continuous watts, this is a great option to go with. One area they didn't perform too well was in the capacity, and of the 648 watt hours claimed, it only tested in at 396 watt hours, which was about 61% of what was advertised, making it one of the most expensive options when it comes to the cost per watt hour. Anyways, the modularity of the battery system is a very unique selling point, and there are no other options as far as I know that give you the ability to run your power station while simultaneously charging via solar. BioLite's 1500 power station was the highest capacity power station in the lineup, and this is the largest power station that they make, but they also make a 600 watt model as well. This power station has all the typical outputs that you'd like to see on any other power station, but what really impressed me is their 100 watt PD USB-C port, which can not only charge devices with blazing fast speed, but it can also be used to charge the power station as well. And if you combine that with the wall plug, the charging speeds would be significantly improved. I found that the capacity was roughly 81% of what was advertised, but it was able to produce over 1200 watts continuously, which was a very impressive feat, making it suitable for most household devices. And I was able to power my refrigerator with this device for 17 hours and 25 minutes, which is far longer than any other power station that I've ever tested. It is a lithium ion battery system, and it's rated for about a thousand cycles, which is not as good as Geniverse's, but it is significantly more lightweight, and it also has a higher capacity. And normally this power station retails for $16.99, but at the moment it's available for $13.60, bringing the cost per watt hour down to $1.10, which does make it much more competitive compared to many of the other power stations here. All Powers is another brand that I've had a fair amount of experience with, and the R600 was the most affordable power station in the lineup. The lithium iron phosphate battery came in at about 85% of what its claimed capacity was, and it was able to deliver 630 watts continuously, which is better than the 600 anticipated. And it also has blazing fast 100 watt USB-C ports. Even though it is a smaller power station, it had a great cost per watt hour at just over $1. And it also had the fastest charging speeds at a little over 1.6 hours. This would pair very well with their 600 watt folding solar panel, which you can find more info about in my mini solar panel comparison video published a few weeks ago. And overall, this is another great entry level model for those of you looking to power a few small devices for shorter periods of time. The OOP 600 watt power station is one that I've been using for well over a year now. And a while back, I did a more in-depth review on this power station along with their 100 watt solar panel. And this was definitely one of the best performing small size power stations in the bunch. The 600 model is the smallest in their lineup, which encompasses a nice range all the way up to their expandable 10 kilowatt hour home backup system. And this lithium iron phosphate battery is available for a little over $300. And even though it only delivered 83% of the capacity advertised, the cost per watt hour is around 63 cents, which was significantly more affordable than any of the other power stations here. So if you're after cheap capacity, this is definitely the option that I'd recommend. It also did reasonably well in the continuous AC output test, putting up a few watts over the 600 advertised. So if you're looking to get into an entry level system, this would definitely be a great way to go. My testing of their 100 watt solar panel was a little less impressive at only 73 watts of the 100 claimed. And if you want to see how well that panel stacks up to five other 100 watt solar panels, I'll put a link to that down in the description below. A few weeks ago, Foxion sent over their iGo 600, which is their smallest model. And they also have a 1200 and a 3600 setup. At the moment, these are only available in Europe, but they are expected to be available on Amazon in the United States in the next few months. Out of all the power stations that I tested, this one performed the best in my capacity testing and delivered 94% of what was claimed, which was 10% better than the next best power station. It also was able to run at a continuous 740 watts, which was 23% higher than the 600 watts advertised. Even though it's small, it's very capable. And if you want something compact that's able to handle some higher watt devices, this would definitely be a good way to go. There's another video on the channel that goes more in depth into this power station and also their 200 watt solar panel. It would be great to hear your thoughts on these power stations down in the comments below. And if you want to pick one up and help support the channel, you can find links down in the description along with a link to the database. This week I'm giving away a 10 watt solar panel from Flex Solar and to enter, comment down below and let us know which portable power station is your favorite. And I'll be randomly selecting a winner with the comment picker app and we'll post them on my community page and respond to the comment next Friday. Full details will be down in the description below.